Hope you don't. Hi folks, I'm Chris, still. Um, this week I'm home on leave, so I'm in my bedroom. I'm back at the old folks' home. Well, not the old folks' home. I don't invade old people's houses um, and wave guns at them, that would be unpleasant. But um, at my parents' house, uh, got a week off and I'm on today with a pair of scissors and a big box from WGC shop. Uh, as an update from my last unboxing video from WGC, uh, I sent them the link to the email I did of that unboxing um, for anyone wondering about what happened with the magpuls that they sent me in the wrong size. Yeah, I, uh, I sent them the, the video, although actually initially I sent them a picture and they offered me store credit and I said well I'd rather get the proper size magpuls and so I sent them a video and they said yep yeah, fair enough we sent you the wrong thing and they sent me them straight away speedy post for 762 size magpuls in Olive Road. although unfortunately I've discovered they don't really fit on uh, FN foul mags, the King Island foul mags they're pretty much only going to work for G3s and M14 I, I thought they were the same size but I guess not so I'll, I'll be doing some stretching of those but um, yeah, uh, kudos to WGC yet again proves themselves to be very reliable excellent retailer um, but on to the subject at hand got a uh, quite a large amount of stuff here um, so let's fire into, uh, fire into the packaging shall I? Now I, I can see there being quite a lot of packaging on this one so you're probably going to see me struggling to actually get to the stuff for quite some time which banded who does that? That's quite impressive for an airsoft shipment, it must be said. I usually do that sort of thing at work. I should maybe save the paperwork out of here before I just cut it in the shreds. You never know when you might need this sort of thing. Yeah, it's probably quite a good idea. In fact, I'm probably setting quite a bad example to a new airsoft type like that if I just did that straight away. Don't really need that, but uh, here we go. Here's the invoice. That's the main bit of paperwork. Just then, you'll make sure you save that whenever you receive an order. Chances are, probably everything will be fine. But you know, better safe than sorry. He says as he really badly handles a pair of scissors. Get out the way. Trying to get at my guns. We're we'll getting there. Progress shall be made. There we go. That. They have put an awful lot of brown tape on here. Tons of bubble wrap in here. Let's see what's on top. Bubble wrap, bubble wrap, bubble wrap, bubble wrap. Everything's in bubble wrap. So let's see, starting off with bubble wrap. The dynamic tactical die tack uh, sock on tight stock, which has been hydro dipped in multi cam. Um, as I did in one of the previous videos, I've already got one of their uh, multicam dipped sort of Serpa type copy holsters for Glocks. Um, and with my new AK, my raped AK project, I thought, well, how how much can you rape an AK? Well, if you put, if you're already putting M4 stuff on it, what more can you do? Well, how about putting that M4 stuff covering a multicam? Winner. That'll do it. So yeah. Um, should we let's fire into the packaging now? Shall we? Yes reason reasoning for this particular item was purely that it's a lot easier to just buy some Ditac pre-dipped stuff than trying to buy your own bits and have them dipped by some company in the States. If you're in America it's probably not too bad but if you're not that would be a pain in the ass. So that's what we're for this one. Um, initial, oh, it's got the LMT trademarks, Lewis Machine Tool which is quite nice. 
got the multicam word written into it in the pattern as it should be. Uh, nice tan rubber butt pad. Can be removed there. Got a little plug. Put yeah, crane stop batteries in there, I'd imagine. I don't think I will do. I'll probably be going with a lipo in, my, in the buffer tube. Yeah, nice rubber pad. Good quality plastic. Um, usual just sort of a sliding adjustment mechanism. Yeah, quite happy with that. And it's like, it's like Christmas, it's like the stocking you get in the morning. You, you never know what you're going to reach inside and pull out. Uh, what's next? What's next? What's next? What's next? We have a couple of King Arms bits. Obviously, being a King Arms AK, it tends to be accepting of King Arms parts. Um, this is the King Arms buffer tube for LiPo batteries, AR15 buffer tube. Um, reason I went for this is because I know it will fit onto the King Arms. AKM4 stock adapter, which will be in there somewhere. Um, they quite, they make quite good metal components for AEGs, King Arms. They're not the best in the world, but they're pretty decent. Uh, I'm not going to take this out of the packaging. You, you will know, I'm sure, what a buffer tube looks like. But yeah, basically, um, the uh, the E Hobby Asia Custom AK that I'm sort of basing this new project on uses this tube, and I copied it. I looked at their parts list <clears throat> and I'm using a lot of the same bits and that's one of them. King Arms again pistol grip for AKs but it's shaped like uh, a mini me saw FN mini me or M249 whatever you want to call it pistol grip um, so that'll be just to change it up a bit it's another part to change not a lot of I find the normal ones fairly ergonomic but just something to rape it a bit more basically rather than using any stock AK parts. Um, more bubble wrap. So we yeah, more than the WGC on that one. Oh yes. Ah oh, now. This doesn't look like what I ordered, I must admit. Or is it? 12 foot. No, it is, yep, so this is the element. Noveske free floating real hand guy. It's the 12.658 inches, not 12 and a half inches, 12.658. Yeah. That, that 658 makes all the difference. That's what the girls say anyway. So yeah, um, I'm going to fire into this I think, because I'm quite interested in this particular item. And I'll tell you the first thing I'm hoping is that the threading on this will be compatible with the threading on my AK to M4 front end adapter. That'll be a, that'll put kind of a bit of a slowdown on the project overall if it's not. But you know, we'll keep our fingers crossed on that one and I shall mention that in a if I can get it out. Uh, now that is a lovely bit of machined aluminium right there. Very light considering the size of that 12 inch rail forend. You know, I I tend to go for plastic handguards because they're lighter and I don't like front heavy guns, but that really doesn't weigh much at all. That is, I mean, initial look. That's quite nicely done. You got proper. I'm not sure if you're able to see them. Noveske trademarks on there. The logos and the word Noveske. You've got various QD sling points on this side. There isn't one there. I don't know why I pointed there. <laughs> QD sling point there. QD sling point there. Uh, on. Uh, oh, sorry. Ah, right, this side. Let's get the right way up. Right, that is how it would. Or is it? I can honestly say I'm not very, very familiar with this particular rail system. I'm not quite sure which way up it sits on the gun. I think it's that way because this rail is the higher up, so that would be the top rail. Um, so this would be the left hand side when it's on your gun. And you've got QD sling pots there and there. On the right hand side, you've just got one there and there isn't one there. But chances are you're probably going to only need those left ones unless you're a lefty handed shooter, which most people aren't. Um, so yeah, it comes with a comes with a fake gas tube. That is for a M16, a 20 inch barrel weapon, which is good in that you can then cut this down to whatever length you want. So that's quite nice. Got all your screws, which attach 
this barrel nut to the rail. Basically, you screw this onto your threads. Threading is that they say, and you screw that on onto your gun. This goes on. Screws all screw in you know, on at the various holes that you've got in the sides and underneath. I'll give you a nice, solid, free-floating rail handle. So I'm quite, quite chuffed with that. I'd say that, considering that's quite a lot cheaper than any Mad Bull or most other type brands, the higher end brand handguards. Obviously, Element they, um, stuff. They, they have a, they have some interesting packaging. That's for sure. This one features a skull made out of Lego, which is interesting. Um, they, they, They've been up a bit up and down with some of their products element in terms of quality there. I wouldn't recommend any of their comms, headsets, and things like that. I've got a few and they're pretty awful, but on the other hand, a lot of their electronics, all their PEX M3Xs, as I did in the airsoft lights and lasers video, those are very good. Um, they've recently done the Surefire M500, which is supposed to be quite good, unfortunately I haven't got one. They've done various copies of other Surefire flashlights, which are far cheaper than the real thing, and for airsoft, do realistically the exact same job so uh, and obviously they do various internal parts uh, quite a wide variety really quite um, they're a company I like we'll put it that way so that's that's the 12 inch Noveski handguard uh, next up we have again with lots more bubble wrap the Ditac Direct Tactical this should be a 40 yep 14 and a half inch out of barrel for standard TM spec AEGs, which will be fitting onto my AK whatnot since it's got the adapter on it. Comes with a Voltor low profile style gas block and another gas tube in there, which is unnecessary, but oh well. You know, I'll have lots of spare gas tube now. Yeah. Um, so pretty much just an out of barrel, really standard 14 millimeter negative thread on the end there. Um, Price-wise, this will run you not a dissim probably slightly lower price than buying a separate 14.5 inch GMP out of barrel, aluminium out of barrel, and a GMP gas block and the gas tube. And this this includes all of those three, so it's probably um, price-wise is quite a good deal. Um, they, they make their metal parts are quite well made. So yeah, happy that one. Next up, we've got a couple more assortments of little bits by the looks of things. We've got the King Arms AK stock adapter to fit buffer tubes and other AR-15 type stocks to your AK. Um, well, TM bodies, King Arms, GMP kits, some D-Boys and some JG guns, I think, um, will we'll take this particular adapter so then you can put the buffer tube of your I've gone with the King Oz buff tube so that will attach onto it and then you can then pick the myriad of M4 AR-15 uh, collapsible stocks that are out there and put that onto your AK which gives you a lot more flexibility, a lot more options than you would with the standard AK stocks. And this one's made of plastic which has got QD slim points on both sides. And a couple of flash hiders. I wasn't quite sure which flash hider to go with for this project, so I've got a couple of the WGC and a couple of D-Boys ones on sale. They're obviously it's not exactly a crucial component of your gun, so personally I don't see there's a massive point buying VFC or LCT or whatever flash hiders unless you need to. But other than that, you might as well go with cheap ones. D-Boys makes perfectly decent metal parts. This one's more of a scar style, with about five dollars, so why not? Um, and then this one's your Troy CQB type with all the spiky bits on the end. Not sure which, to, which one we're going for on the gun itself, but I'll probably be doing some videos showing the gun once it's all completed. More bubble wrap. And the last part before we get to the main event is again Dietac Motley Cam Dipped. Tango Down QD style stubby vertical grip because I just wanted. A bit more multi cam on the rape AK. There's not a lot of point to that. I'm not a fan of the stubby vert grip, especially. They're good for your sort of um, if you're not going for that straight up grip on your VFG. If you got if you want more of a sort of thumb break grip, then these stubby ones are quite good for that. Now, let's break into the packaging. Why not? Uh, 